My name is Keith Dayton. I am a 1970 graduate of the College of William and Mary and was uh, pledged into Pi Lam in 1967. Uh, I've spent 51 years in federal service to the United States, 40 of them in the Army. Uh, my final assignment in the Army was as a three-star general in Israel and the Palestinian Authority, where I coordinated the activities of the uh, Palestinian Security Services with the Israelis. I then spent 10 years as the director of the George Marshall Center in Germany. I've been married for 47 years. Uh, and I have three children who live all across the United States and eight grandchildren. Well, I joined this fraternity out of a choice from many fraternities because of its creed, to be honest with you. Uh, Williamsburg, Virginia in the 60s was a very sleepy, small southern town, and a lot of the fraternities were not very inclusive of people. Uh, Pi Lam was the inclusive fraternity. It emphasized scholarship, it emphasized social uh, gathering, and, uh, but it also emphasized things like character, devotion, and selfless service. Well, obviously family matters, and I've been fortunate enough to be married to the same woman for 47 years. And she's done a lot to ground me. Now, obviously she wasn't a Pi Lam, but also the, the, the principles that I learned and that I lived and the examples that I experienced when I was uh, at William & Mary have really kept me in very good stead. I went off right from William & Mary to Cambridge University and the standards were quite different, but I was able to rely on what I had built up, uh, almost had saved in my mind uh, to keep me through that, those years and then all the years that followed. To me, the interesting thing about the creed is that its, its value has not changed over time. Uh, it, it has withstood the, the test of time, uh, and the creed means character, honesty, justice, and freedom. And that's what our country's all about. And uh, the fact that it is inclusive of all religions and races is even more important. Uh, to me, it's a microcosm of the United States. And I would say the greatest impact of the creed has been that it gave me values that I've been able to, I hope, live ever since for the last five decades. Because these principles, as I said earlier, are enduring. And they're what makes this fraternity different from other fraternities. But uh, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, a man by the name of John Shalikashvili, uh, was my first battalion commander in the Army. And he taught me the value of delegating authority, but not responsibility. He let us subordinate commanders do a lot of things. And if we screwed it up, he didn't come down on us. He basically supported our decisions and then showed us how it would be done better. Uh, I'd say he's probably my foremost uh, role model, mentor. You know, I'd like to just make a final comment that um, leadership really does matter. And I'll go back to the words I used earlier today from George Marshall that resonated with a couple of the people in the room, which is that, you know, the best leader is the one that people serve because they don't want to let that leader down. They serve because they think they're doing it themselves, and the leader backs them up. Okay, even if it goes badly, he says it was my fault. But if it goes well, it's their credit. It's their achievement. I think that's really important, and that spirit of... Again, it goes back to the creed and selfless service. Selfless is a big word, okay? It means it's not about me, it's about them, okay? And people will follow you if they believe that you're not really in it for yourself, but you're in it for them. And the last thing I would say is integrity in everything you do, because if you lose integrity, you've lost it all. And I'll leave it at that. If I had the opportunity to go back in time, you have to remember that I was a career military officer for 40 years. And the military tends to live by this motto of duty, honor, and country. Uh, I, would, I would suggest that to a young person. Yes, we need people who are entrepreneurs. We need people who do things in the private sector and all that. But we desperately need people who are dedicated to their country and believe that the common good, again, something that's in the creed, selfless service to the common good, I think that's very important. And I would encourage someone to think deeply on that. Whether the military is the right life for them under these conditions that we have these days, I don't know. But it's got to be something that deals with service to the people. And if you're not going to do that and find out what the people need and want, then I think you're wasting your time. You may get rich, but at what cost?